Hey guys, welcome to day 10 of One Zen Tangle a Day. It's wonderful to see all of your smiling faces again. Today, before we jump into our three new patterns for the day, I want to talk to you about landscapes, because that's what this talks about here. Um, we're not drawing a landscape, but we are drawing inspiration from landscapes. I'll just use a landscape that I've drawn as an example to talk about the same concept that they're talking about here. In the landscape, one of the ways we create depth is by making things that get farther away be more gray and pale than the things that are closer up. Now you can see that same kind of effect going on right here. If you imagine this as a landscape, this uh, darkest pattern down at the bottom could be the hill that is close to us. And then these other patterns would be hills overlapping farther into the distance, and then this lightest pattern might be the sky up above. And you can use the same concept even if you're not doing, you know, working from bottom to top with, you know, closer to farther. You could do use the same concept to say maybe like in this picture, this middle area is the darkest and that appears to be the closest to us. And then the rest of these patterns around it feel like they are uh, the next layer, sort of a middle ground, and then this lightest layer at the top feels like the background. So it's not necessarily like a hill and then farther hills and then a sky, but it is something close to us, something farther away, and then something farthest away. And so as we jump into drawing these three patterns, one of the things we want to consider is the lightness or airiness of the pattern itself. Finery has a lot of empty space, so it is a very light and airy pattern. Echoism has some big empty spaces, but then the spaces in between are kind of filled in, so it's not quite as light and airy as finery, but it still is quite light and airy. And then flukes has a lot more happening. There aren't any big white areas so it's going to be darker. So let's jump right into it here with finery. We start with long ribbony shapes. It's kind of like the way that we started the perk pattern. Nice little S shape to it. Two parallel lines. And the trick is to give a good gap in between, a nice big gap. So I'm not going to do very many of these just a handful and notice they've got big empty spaces between now in the empty spaces you're going to alternate which direction you go with these other little s curves so in this gap i'll make an s curve that goes up over up and then on this side i'll go the other direction with the same up over up, but it's going the opposite direction, right? So they mirror each other. And then give some gaps between those two. You don't want big, you don't want them close together. You want big gaps. The next step is to make these little arrows with sparkles. So it's like a dotted line and then an arrow. And those sort of point towards each other. They're just between these lines we just made. So. Make a dotted line and an arrow. Make a dotted line and an arrow. On the other side of there, we make one that mirrors it, reverse, goes the opposite direction. And then over here, we're not gonna see the arrow, we're just gonna see the dotted line that goes out because we don't really have the space to draw that arrow. There, and you can see how that pattern has lots of empty space, so that's a great airy pattern for a nice, you know, distant feel. If you wanted to add some shading, notice that the areas here that are shaded are the areas that the arrows point towards. So the arrows point towards this uh, sort of ribbony shape, so we'll darken in that ribbony shape and maybe a little bit lighter as we move up away from that. The shadow is going to make that area feel like it is a dip down in underneath. Echoism is fun. It's sort of, I mean, you can imagine it being sort of like writing the letter L in cursive over and over and over without picking up your pen. And you do that directly with your pen. 
Start in one corner, work your way across. Nice big loops. The bigger the loops are, the lighter and airier the pattern will feel. The smaller and closer together the loops are, the more, uh, the darker the pattern will be. Now, we're going to leave those loops white, but in the spaces in between, we're going to do these sort of spiralies that follow the shape. So it's like an aura spiral. So, something like that. And just do that in every empty gap. And then again, just to emphasize how light and fluffy these loops are, we want to just shade all around them as well. So right over top of those sort of aura spirals that we made, we're just going to shade that whole background area. And there, that's all there is to it for echoism. We've got the, uh, the light, fluffy, ovally, loopy shapes, and then the background is darker. For flukes, we're doing another grid pattern, and you could totally do, you know, straight lines for it, but that would be a little bit more boring. What I'm gonna do is nice curved grid, and uh, notice that it's a diagonal grid. It's not verticals and horizontals, it's the two diagonals. Uh, it really doesn't matter because, I mean, you could turn it whichever way you want, but I'm gonna do nice curved diagonals here because we're thinking of it as diamonds. So each one of these diamond shapes is going to have at the top a small diamond that's dark and then auras around that diamond. So I'll start with this one in the middle where we can see the whole thing. Make a small darkened in diamond at the top and again if you wanted to make the pattern darker, you could make that uh, diamond bigger, that dark diamond bigger. Um, there are lots of things you can do to make it darker or lighter. And then we're simply going to follow around it with these auras. Now that kind of makes it look like a little tile, uh, and then we're going to just tessellate those tiles around. So every single one of these diamonds is going to be that same pattern. And uh, once we've finished most of it, when we get to these areas at the top, where do I put the little diamond? The answer is I don't, because if I carried this tile up, it would be way up here. So instead of working my way from top to bottom on these upper tiles, I'm going to work my way from bottom to top. So what does that look like? It's more of a V, and then a V, and then a V, and then... So we're not even going to see this top half where the diamond is, so it's just going to be a V inside of that tile, and then a V, and then close it off. Just like that. All right, and then there's lots of different ways you can shade flukes, but uh, what they've done here is they've decided, I don't know, maybe the light is shining in from this direction and these tiles are overlapping each other, so where one tile overlaps the next row, uh, there's a shadow there. So the way you would do that is just pick a direction you want the shadows to go, and on that side of the line, shade, and... Once you've done that, it kind of looks like they, the layers overlap each other. Well, that was pretty easy. Now our job is to make a tile using these concepts and thinking about how we want lighter, airier patterns to feel like our most distant background. Make patterns that are sort of more of a middle value be our more middle ground, uh, you know, not too far, not too close, and then maybe use some of the darker patterns that we have practiced before and let those be the foreground or the really close patterns. So I normally recommend against planning out your Zentangles in advance, but uh, in the interest of emphasizing that, I'm going to use a sort of a ziggy-zaggy string that's just going to kind of emphasize that, um, 
landscape nature that we've talked about. So it's going to be closest down at the bottom and it's going to be like hills that get farther and farther away. It. This one right here is a little little oversimplified, I think, but I just made the A maze pattern, but just spread the lines apart so they weren't so close together. So it's like a maze, but with bigger gaps. Anyway, uh, that is that for day number 10. Just to recap, what we've done is we've used a landscape as an inspiration for figuring out how darker patterns can look like they are in the foreground, and then the lighter the patterns get, the more distant and airy they look. That's actually called aerial perspective, which again harkens back to yet another tool that you can have in your tool belt that helps you no matter whether you're making abstract art or realistic landscapes. And just if you're interested, this landscape that I used as an example is one that I drew for my parents for their 50th wedding anniversary. It's actually a photograph that my mother's father took before they got married. So it's a 50-year-old photograph that I drew uh, for them as a wedding anniversary present. So if you enjoyed day 10 of One Zen Tangle a Day, if you've enjoyed this process of me going through this book study, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for tomorrow. I'll see you again on day 11.